Hello, everyone. I'm Kristen Miller Zone, Curator of Collections and Exhibitions at the Lauren Rogers Museum in Laurel, Mississippi. And I am here today with Chet Chetanagutz, who is one of the artists in our exhibition, Mississippi Collegiate Art Faculty Invitational, which began on March 17th, right before we closed the museum down. So we are going to be doing a series of conversations with the artists whose work is included in the exhibition so that we can bring this exhibition to you virtually during the shutdown. I want to thank the sponsors of our exhibition, Community Bank and Sanderson Farms. So thanks so much for joining me today, Chet. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. I'm trying to adjust like everybody else are doing, so. Yes. Well, we were hoping to have this conversation at a celebratory reception in April, but hopefully we'll be able to do that once we've been able to open back up. Hold to that. Me too. So Chet, why don't you give us a little bit of your background, your biography, and, and how you came to be an artist? Uh, you know, I always had an interest in art as a child. Um, it just kind of like carried on the middle school and the high school levels, but, uh, you know, I was pretty successful in in my art classes, you know, didn't do so well in, in, in others, but uh, I was always able to get by. Uh, when it came uh, for the college level, uh, my my art teacher kind of encouraged me to to apply for the art academy. You know, I didn't think about doing that, and I had a relative of ours, and um uh, he uh he went through the art you know art, art academy so i said well you know that seems like a pretty a path that i can take so i just start getting ready and preparing for it it was not a choice that i can hey i want to be an artist and just like register for the class you have to go through an examination a kind of you have to draw and and prove that you have the talent to go to art school so it was um uh, about like three thousand applicants um there was Art academies in the 90s were, you know, it was not as common as, you know, we have it in today in, in Turkey. That's where I'm from. So, um, you know, I did that. I was able to get into the painting uh, department. Uh, so, but anyway, I think I just started like a jump real, real ahead, but uh, kind of ignored the fact, you know, didn't give you inf enough information about where I was born and everything. But born in Istanbul, Turkey, and I was there until 97. Uh, so that four years into the art school, um, you know, I studied, I was about to graduate, then I uh, get a chance to uh, come to the United States uh, to study English. That two months of journey turned into uh, me uh, transferring to Delta State University and uh, kind of finishing my undergraduate there. So how did you find Delta State University in Mississippi from Istanbul? I, first, I went to uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. I had some friends there. Uh, they made, they helped me like make arrangements about signing up for the English as a Second Language course. As I was getting ready to leave and return to uh, Istanbul, I saw Delta State swim team coming up uh, to University of uh, Arkansas and Little Rock. They were they were competing, and my background and I was a swimmer too. So I introduced myself. Um, and then they needed a sprint and middle distance freestyler. So I went back home and did my paperwork and I just transferred to Delta State. It was just kind of a very quick transition. Wonderful. Well, it's a beautiful campus in a beautiful city and part of Mississippi. So not kind of the opposite of Istanbul, <laughs> but lovely, lovely nonetheless. <laughs> so when did you start teaching at Delta State? So um, after I transferred there, you know, majority of my classes transferred to, to the curriculum. So like majority of the art courses and everything. So I have to finish the general education. So I finished Delta State in 2001. Um, and then I went to Memphis College of Arts uh, as soon as I finished it. And, I, and at the same year, I got married too. So that two years into the uh, graduate school, I finished, and I was fortunate at that time, uh, there was an opening at Delta State. Um, so I was living in Cleveland, commuting to Memphis, Tennessee, and I applied for the job, and I was fortunate enough to, to get it. So I started teaching in 03. Wonderful. So when you were in art school in Turkey and then also then at Delta State, did you have a particular medium in which you were most interested or excelled? Yeah, I was studying painting 
uh, in drawing in Istanbul. So that was just kind of a natural transition. I was always interested in other mediums too, but the curriculum in Turkey was built for you to, to be concentrated in this particular area. And I think like uh, where I what I found, I mean, we made those changes at Delta State too. In the early 2000s, it was all about like you picking up a, a medium and then concentrating on it. But right now in our curriculum at Delta State too, it's just more of a giving you a broad knowledge about all materials. and then make sure the students make the right choice. But my main, my main area has always been painting and drawing. Wonderful. So we met when I came to do a studio visit about, gosh, almost two years ago. It was a year and a half ago fall. And um, I was doing studio visits for of uh, professor studios around the state looking to do this invitational exhibition that opened in March. And so what I have asked all of the artists who have been invited to be in the show is to choose an artwork from our collection, from Lauren Rogers' collection, and respond to it with their own work of art. So do you wanna, I'm gonna pull up the Rauschenberg painting, or I'm sorry, print, if you can tell us a little bit about kind of the experience of coming to Lauren Rogers and, and looking around the collection and, and how you chose this piece. Yeah, I didn't know, you, you know the museum had a Robert Rauschenberg piece. It's Robert Rauschenberg has been my favorite artist. Um, and I really look, love his work because he's always had like a very free spirited artist and he would try anything, like doesn't want to repeat himself in the next body of works. So I was looking to new ways. So as I was touring the museum, I was really surprised that you guys had a piece. So immediately, you know, my attention went on to that. So I um, took, uh, there's a plexiglass in front of that print. So I took some images and um, the way I approached even this piece, and I was trying to see you now what would Robert Rushenberg do? You know, he, he would always have his like, hey, I want to kind of experiment uh, with the materials that he founds and put to, puts them together. So I was really cropping this particular image the the center the band of that piece really attracted me and when you look to the upper part of it almost like that reminds me of the silhouette silhouette of a mountain and then you know that was kind of like going back and forth about like how to execute this piece you know i thought like i overwhelmingly like the red i thought like it has to be the dominant piece when if i create another piece you know, inspired by this particular one. The images um, surrounding the piece, I um, paid a little bit of attention to it. As I was looking at it, I realized, I think there's um, kind of a strings, you know, coming through it or embedded into it. That's how I kind of remember it. Um, but that kind of took my interest too. I mean, I, I want to, I want, oh, I think that maybe the string part is like, to that red area, I don't know that, like this. I think here. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so that the main thing was like the red stripe at the center. So um, when I came back to my studio, I was thinking about the scale of the piece. I really wanted to create a bigger piece than this uh, uh, Rauschenberg print. So I uh, thought about the sizes, but then I found a part, a piece that I have kind of ignored for a while. And I just kind of revisited it and then already had strings fused into the canvas of the piece that you see in the museum right now. Then I started developing it, you know, that silhouette of a mountain that I was mentioning you that, yeah, that, that particular area. You can kind of like see the similarities in the Rob, Robert Rauschenberg's piece. You know, I was kind of like, kind of mimicking that a little bit. Um, I added some additional pieces uh, over that, like that in the in the the, the colorful piece, like a, it's this collection of paints in in the right area where you kind of see like the roundness of that area, like multiple colors combined. It's actually a, it's a latex that is pulled out of collected from my previous pieces, so I collaged it back onto this painting. Um, it started with me painting the whole piece into red and then kind of like eliminating, adding some uh, complementaries over it, blues and, you know, and um, getting some oranges in place, just trying to find a balance. And I kind of finished the piece like this. 
then I, then I start thinking about to frame it. Okay, so how am I going to go ahead and like frame it? I thought about using floater frames, but then I say, well, you know, this is not. It's kind of a piece, you know, you know, inspired by Robert Rushenberg, and I start start looking into different ways of doing things. So I purchased some uh, rope. Then I wrapped around that piece like twice. Um, maybe it's in the original gallery. You won't see it in this particular image. Yeah, like that. So, and I, uh, I believe I used screw just to kind of place the framing there. And then I thought, well, if I just end it there and not include additional kind of extension thing. And I thought, well, maybe I can use that draping the the rope on the ground, kind of reaching to Robert Rushenberg, so I can make it make a connection with this piece this way too, instead of keeping it side side by side. And I remember his some of his pieces too, like kind of sculptural paintings, I would call it. In the he would always extend some piece uh, from the two dimensional pieces, you know, uh, and then his, his biggest large large pieces. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then that statement that I had with that piece, you know, and I think like I can go back and talk about my experience too, how I met with Robert Rushenberg in mm -hmm. Istanbul while I was an art student. So as I was roller, roller skating, you know, working at the museum in, in an international show, and then he was walking by with the creator of the exhibition, then I think our, the fact that I was roller skating with my girlfriend, I have got the attention of the curator, and then we, that's how we met, actually. It was introduced to it. It was kind of really neat, actually. So, so you I were roller skating to get around the exhibition hall more quickly, or you were just taking a break from working? No, we were, we were actually working at the exhibition. We convinced the, um, the managers of the exhibition, hey, this is such a big expo center. It's all concrete flooring. And, you know, we, were, we really loved roller skating at that time with her. But, and I said, well, you know, it would be a great way to roller skate and at the same time monitor the exhibition. You know, we can get around really fast. But then people thought like we were actually doing a performance art piece and we didn't think about it. Our, our uh, reaction was very intuitive. Uh, several people stated that, you know, they thought that was the case and that was probably one of the best pieces they've seen in the exhibition. This came from a critique. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> Kind of a, it was kind of a neat experience. And so you got to meet him and, and, and did you get to speak with him at all about artwork or was it just the experience of actually seeing him in person? I think I was uh, watching uh, Robert Rushenberg's interviews too. Like um, he, he, he was a very humorous person. I didn't get a chance to speak to him about the artwork, but at the end, at the beginning of the exhibition, I remember the reception he was wearing those uh, sucker suits like a, a southerner a gentleman would wear. He came mm -hmm. to the microphone. Everybody thought that, oh, he's going to say something very profound. He just thanked everybody, and that was it. <laughs> so, uh, so I don't know. I guess, like, you have to be in the right moment. You know, you have to be close to him. And he was not – what I found out, like, watching his interviews, too, it was kind of – he would speak, say, a few words, but not so much. Like um, – mm -hmm kind of hard to take the words out of him but I think he just rather performed um in life and that's how he said what he's supposed to say his his artwork is so full of imagery that it's it lends itself to a narrative for what he wanted to say so maybe he didn't feel the need to say it in words because he was saying it in all of the images in his artwork that's that's true I think I mean that that makes a lot of sense and the fact that he was so open to all social possibilities in art making. Uh, maybe they're speaking about it, it would, would take the whole um, mystery out of them. Right, right. Yes, a lot of artists don't like to talk specifically about what their work is about because they want you to bring the, your own thoughts and processes to it. So we don't want to take all of the mystery out of your red homage to Rauschenberg, <laughs> but we appreciate you telling us a little bit about it. Um, so what does the, the rest of your summer look like? Well, at least right now that we're trying to finish up the semester at Delta State uh, with this sudden adaptation to uh, to online courses, like trying to teach uh, studio courses, like you know face-to-face -face studio courses online, 
I meet like twice a week with the students, like my regular uh, class schedule, one, one hour, we do a Zoom meeting. We do critiques like that, they send post images. So our goal is just to finish this next three weeks. And then we'll we'll see what happens after that. Maybe there'll be some, you know, changes, you know, but I, I don't know, we're trying to adapt. Um, and then think our class maybe in a hybrid manner for the fall, we'll see. Were you planning on teaching this summer or were you taking time off to make from work? I was going to take time off for sure. But after this, I definitely need, need to take a time off. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, a lot of a lot of artists are using this shelter in place time to to get back into their studios and to spend more time there than they've been able to in the last few months or years or, you know, kind of in their normal practice. So I hope that this time brings some good results in your studio for you. Thank you so much. And then I think this show, uh, the, the collegiate, you know, the professor show, you know, uh, at Laurel Museum of Art. And I had another show in um, North Alabama University. They open about the same time. So uh, my works are there. And then we're trying to do something just like we're doing, like an interview that brings some attention to those exhibitions. But yeah. So it's kind of, a, I don't have like a lot of works in my studio right now, but it, I'm looking forward to creating some more. Wonderful. And hopefully we'll be able to, to have a celebration of the exhibition this summer if, if we're able to get all back together again. Thank you great. so much, Jet. Have a wonderful day. You too.